Hello, it's Jay here again and welcome to another tutorial. So, in this lesson, we're going to work on filling out this void. But before we do so, we need to create voids for every character in the enum block. So, with that said, let's come below this function. And these can be of type private, of type void, and... We're going to name them exactly the same. So, black robot. We'll open and close brackets. We'll open and close again. And then what we're going to do is just copy this. And we're going to paste it in seven times. So, there's two, three, four, five six and seven and what we can do is just copy and paste the naming conventions for each of the other voids so i'll continue on here so the next one's blue robot let's copy and paste that in and of course obviously you need to do this as many times as necessary depending on how many characters you actually have so we're nearly done here let's copy and paste the final one in and then we'll come inside the first one we'll put in a debug.log Open and close brackets, close the line off, inside the brackets, the little speech marks. And then we're going to copy and paste the name of the function in. So, again, let's just copy that debug log and paste it in. And then we'll have to do the same for the message in the log which in this case is the name of the void. So let's just get that final one in place and then we'll copy and paste in the correct naming conventions again. And we're not going to do the code for these functions in this lesson. We're just setting up the void. So when we create our little case block, we do not get any errors. So nearly done. The final one. We'll paste that in. So that's them all set up. And we'll come inside the character select manager. Now what we're basically creating here is a switch block. Now normally we would use the I enumerate function, but in this case we can actually just use a void. And we'll begin by saying switch, open and close brackets, we'll open and close again. We'll come inside this first set of brackets and we'll state what we want to switch. Which in this case is the underscore character select state. Which is tied here, character select state. So with that in place, let's come here and we'll just add default and we want a colon. Not the normal semicolon we have here. In this case, we want the full colon. We'll come below, we'll say case zero. And again, we want the full colon. We'll enter. And we want the name of the first character. In my case, it's the black robot. Open and close brackets. Now we can close off as we normally would with a normal semicolon. And we can break and semicolon again. So just close the line off as normal. And let's copy this in. Now the first one wants to be zero. 
the same as it is here in the enum block. But the rest will just count up. So let's just copy and paste that in first a number of times. And the numbers you change these to should correspond with their number within the enum block. So let's just copy and paste white robot again. Let's paste that in. And that should be case one. So in my case, it's the red robot. Case two. And we've just got to keep going now until we have them all in place. So the blue robot is number three. The brown one's next. Which will be case four. And we've just got three more to do so green robot that will be case five for the pink robot case six and finally for the gold robot which will be case seven and let's just save that off there in fact we can actually get another void in place. We'll come to the bottom of the script just before the last close brackets and we'll say void on GUI. Let's open and close brackets. We'll open and close again. So we'll make sure the script is saved off. Now, this is all we're going to do in this lesson. It's going to be a fairly short video this time and there's a reason for that because this script should only hopefully take a couple or maybe three videos to complete. I'm going to try and get all the code for the void update done in one single video, which I think we'll probably do in the very next lesson. And as for these blocks here, we could probably get these done in one, maybe two lessons because the code is going to be the same for each block apart from changing a couple of little variables. So the code is nearly exactly the same for each block just with a couple of small changes. So hopefully we can get that done in a single lesson. So I think that will be best to leave it here now. We have the script set up just ready for some code and I really want to uh, do these in a single lesson rather than start and then leave them and come back to them. Let's get these functions filled out in a single lesson and we can just concentrate on the entire block of code we're going to use. So as I said, short video this time, but I still hope you enjoyed it. I hope to see you next time and until then, as always, Bye for now.